It's dirty. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, that's better. Okay. Now let's flip you. There. Okay. Watch out, Rocket. All right, you guys. So I'm going to start talking here in a second. Um, it's two minutes in, so I probably could go ahead and start. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get comfortable. It's a little bit chilly in here. I don't have the heater on. It's only probably like 70 degrees, honestly. But, all right, so let me get nice and comfortable. Is my hair okay? I got water still in my hair. All right, so I wanted to talk about, I'm going to start talking before people come in and start asking me questions or talking to me. So I wanted to talk about why being a surgical tech is not the solution or why it might not be the solution. Hold on. I'm trying to get situated. I think that's better. All right, so to go ahead and get started, the reason I don't think being a surgical tech is the solution is mostly because most people go to work and they don't have a plan. So if you don't have a financial plan or a budget, it doesn't matter what job you go into or what career you go into, you're just going to be working to pay bills and from paycheck to paycheck. And I see this happening a lot, especially, well, I saw it a lot in the OR. I know people go to work and they just pretty much work in to pay off debt or to basically live paycheck to paycheck. And so if you don't pay attention to your financial like situation before you go to surgical tech school, it doesn't matter how much money you make as a surgical tech, you're still going to be poor or broke however you want to say it so i've witnessed multiple people make a whole lot of money throughout their careers including myself i'm including myself into this category we made a whole bunch of money and we i didn't have a plan people that i knew didn't have a plan and i think i was like 30 when i started paying more attention to my financial education just um being more aware but i still didn't do certain things i still wasn't really saving and i was aware of like a 401k or a tsp i think is what it was called come here rocket i think it was what it was called when i was in the navy come sit down come sit down thank you sit down thank you um yeah i think it was a tsp thrift savings plan when i was in the navy but it still really didn't give you like the financial education that was required for me to actually live my life. Now I did have a financial, um, I took a financial course or something like that, but it was because I had a hardship when I was in the Navy and they make you take a financial like education course because I needed to borrow some money. I think it was, I think they did like a hardship loan for me or something. But one of the requirements was for me to um, take a financial management course or whatever. And so I did that, but that still didn't really teach me like about money or what to do with the money for the most part. Like I knew, okay, I have money going to my thrift savings plan, but I really didn't know what the thrift savings plan was or how to use it or anything like that. And the same thing, a thrift savings plan in the military is still a, four, it's a 401k in the regular world. And so, or I don't know if they changed it now. This was back then, but I don't know if they changed it now. And so, what we're not taught either at your job, most jobs don't really do a financial education course. They may, and I, well, the jobs that I was taking. I know my friend, she worked at a couple of different um, universities and they had financial educators there, <clears throat> excuse me, but they didn't really, at the places that I were, it was somebody in there talking about, you know where how to spend your money or where to how to budget your money or what a budget is or anything like that and so as i became 
as I went more into being a surgical tech, um, I didn't even eat dinner yet. Well, go eat dinner. I already ate. I'm nice and full tonight. Um, go eat, and then we can talk. I'll be here for a little while. But yeah, um, so I just went ahead when I was working at the hospitals. I actually started looking into different ways to invest my money. But I already knew about business, so it was easy for me to start doing business things. And so that's what I kept doing. But I remember talking to this doc one day and her husband actually was a um, financial coach or financial advisor or something like that at the um, at Edward Jones. And so I remember talking to him and he told me that I needed to have an extra $400 a month to invest. Um, we could talk now. I'm drinking some hot cocoa. It's good. Ooh, cocoa sound good. Um, yeah, it's, it's not cold here, but it's a little bit chilly here right now. So yeah, I went ahead and I looked into ways to create this $400 that, um, the guy told me his name was Colin Adams. I, I think, yeah, Colin Adams. He was here in Jacksonville. I don't know if they're still here, but his wife was OBGYN here in Jacksonville. And I met her when I was in the labor and delivery at one of the local hospitals here. And so we was talking and she told me to reach out to him, but I never got the 400 extra dollars or when I did, I didn't go back to him. What I ended up doing was learning more about financial education and financial literacy on my own. And starting, I basically just started YouTubing and Googling budgets. And so I started budgeting. Now, like I said, they're not going to teach you this in like school. So even if you go to surgical tech school or even if you get hired as a surgical tech, they're not going to teach you how to manage your money. And this is the most critical part. It's not this, it's not what you make, you guys. A lot of us get it confused. Like, yeah, you want to make a lot of money. But if you're making a lot of money and you don't really budget the money, it don't matter how much money you make, you're still going to be broke. Like you're still going to have the same bad money habits and you're going to end up with the same results. So and before you even think about really going to surgical tech school, what I would say is start budgeting your money. And it is a mindset. Like you have to understand why you're doing it. And there's certain things that you may not be able to do. Like you may not be able to go buy the same, um, can't search that by Chanel clothing. I mean, they can, yeah, they make enough money to buy Chanel clothing, but the whole point of what I'm saying right now is you shouldn't be buying Chanel clothing. Um, you should be trying to come up with ways, if you're going to buy Chanel, go to Goodwill and find Goodwill, I mean, find Chanel and Goodwill. Don't go buy, good, you know, Chanel from the Chanel store. Like, that's not what we're doing over here, um, Ariel. So... I would suggest people start looking at how much money you have because it's not going to matter how much money you make in the OR. That doesn't matter. You can make as much money as you want to and still be broke. So when I say surgical tech is not the solution, it's not the solution because the solution is not in the amount of money. It's in what you're doing with the money. Are you out buying Chanel when you can't afford it? Are you out buying stuff that you really can't afford? And how do you know if you can afford something? So look at, can you buy it two or three times? If you can't buy it, really they say three or four times. If you can't buy it, then you can't, then you can't afford it. First time catching a live, just wanted to say thanks for your bids. You was by me to travel. I am over a year certified. CST just wanted to go to more years. Yes, good job and welcome. Welcome, welcome. So now that you're traveling, start stacking your money, start investing your money, Will the Beast. <laughs> that's cute um yeah go ahead and start stacking your money i'm not saying that to not you know to, i'm not trying to turn anybody away from being a surgical tech or anything like that i'm just saying if you're traveling and i'm glad i can inspire you to travel you guys inspired me to continue traveling and to continue sharing this type of information with you but what i want you and because i met several traveling spd tests um in my life and I have the same, I'm giving you the same advice. The job is not the solution, ultimately. While you're traveling, because you're making as much money as you can, and the most money that you can make, put that money up. Like, live off of less than what you're making. It's, it's, really, they say 50% of what you make should only be for your monthly expenses, and then the other 30% should be towards a investment Um strategy some type of investment strategy and then 20 percent should go into your savings only for the six months and then once you up until six months of savings and once you get six months of savings then you can start putting the rest of that money back into your investment strategy so 
um thank you i'm so glad that you're traveling and i'm glad that you caught alive too um oh, wait, wait, um, hold on wait a minute ariel says Kef, i made a plan you think it's best for me to become you i don't know ariel you really don't need to pick a service you first just got to go to surgical tech school Kef, i've been watching your video i've been watching for a minute i've already had a savings account and i'm employed i'm not traveling so okay a savings account is not what i'm talking about when i say savings you guys i'm not referring to a savings account so Excuse me if I'm using the wrong terminology, but a savings account, um, yeah, anesthesia tech and a surgical tech are two different, but a surgical tech can do anesthesia work, so you can be a surgical tech and do both, but you first got to become a surgical tech before you can pick a specialty area. area. So um, back to what I was saying, though, the 20% of uh, the savings account, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, the savings account it shouldn't be in the savings an actual savings account it should be if it's going to be in the savings account it has to be in like a high interest savings account like ali i think is one um ali bank or something like that that's one but i wouldn't even put it there i would put the money over into the stock market you guys because that's what the um because that's what the um t uh the 401k really is but instead of you doing a 401k do it in the stock market and control it and have more control over it yourself and more understanding for yourself instead of putting it into a 401k where you don't have any really like con like full control over it and one of the easiest places to put the money right now is in robin hood so if you take in 30 or if you can do 50% of your money, then put 50% of your money up into the stock market. Do VOO or some type of ETF where you're going to have be more diversified instead of buying individual stocks. Put the money into the stock market until you can figure out what else to do with it. If you want to go into business, then go into business. Okay, Maria Sanchez. Hi, thank you for joining us. Do How did you make the leap into traveling? Um, How do you first? P.S. Really like your videos. Were you afraid of traveling? I was afraid of traveling. I was afraid of traveling. Um, but I was more afraid of being broke. <laughs> I'm not going to even lie to you. I was more afraid of not having the financial resources that came with me going to scrub. It, it just made more sense for me to go and scrub traveling than it did for me to work here in Florida as a, as a full-time surgical tech at one of these hospitals, they only want to pay you a certain amount of money. You lose money if you stay at a facility more than two years. So once you go there, you get your two years worth of experience or your year worth of experience, and then you should move to another hospital. And I say that because not only will you get more experience, but when you move, just the, just the physical act of moving, they pay you more at the other hospital because you come in at a higher um, experience level, right? And so traveling, it's good because not only do you get the more competitive rate for your job in the area that you'll be at, you will also get it at a um, tax benefit. You, it'll be more tax beneficial for you because most of your income, half of your income comes from a housing stipend and a meal stipend, which is non-tax. So yes, traveling is it. Um, okay, do, oh, wait a minute. So I just took a leap, Maria. Honestly, I just was like, you know, I'm a mom. I was in debt. I needed to get out of debt. It was the fastest way for me to get out of debt. Um, I first created a budget. I knew what my monthly expenses were. I knew how much money I needed to get out of debt. And I knew um, that I could go travel for at least 13 weeks at the minimum and get the amount of money that I needed to pay off the debt. And so I did it twice. Oh, well, I, I traveled more than one time, but I'm saying I went and took two assignments to pay off my debt. And then the rest was just money in the bank. Um, I'm not traveling yet, says Will the Beast. Still got six months to go. Hit my two year month experience. Get that experience in. Don't make them. Don't let them stick you in one service. Either get as many services or go PR into as many as many hospitals or facilities that you can in your area. The biggest thing I'm worried about is what to do for housing since I will have to rent my house. Get an RV. Y'all hit the like button for me. It's eight people in here. You, I would greatly appreciate just a like. Just hit it one time. Don't hit it twice because you're going to unlike it. Get an RV, Wildebeest. That's what's on my, that's what's next to me. Even if I, I want to go travel to Africa next year. Thank you guys for the like. I greatly appreciate it. I swear I do. I, if I could hug you, I would, but I can't, you know, we need six feet. <laughs> um, but I would get an RV. I would get an RV, you guys, 
and travel, especially if you have kids or another place. Cause I had to pay for it. Cause I've been living at the house that I'm living in right now. I've been living here for six years. So I didn't give up my place. So I had to travel to a place that not only was going to be more efficient, uh, beneficial for me financially, but two, I needed to make sure I had enough money to stay here. But I rented a room. If you don't want to get an RV, then rent a room. But there's tra travel nurses and travel surgical techs that are renting their, their, that have RVs and that are living out of their cars. If you can convert your car into something. I did it for a couple weeks in California. I sure did. I slept right in my car. I had no problem with it. I parked where everybody else was at. Actually, for a couple of days, I stayed at the hospital. I'm not going to even lie. I posted up at the hospital, and it was fine. Nobody knew who, and if they did, I really didn't care. But in California, people sleep in their cars. It's not a, it's not a big deal. But even here in Florida, you know, RVs is a thing. So get an RV. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, will I be 20? Um, I'll be 25 when I become a surgical tech. But the question is, do I have to be? I would be a general surgeon. You got to be a regular surgical tech before you can pick a specialty. I decided not to travel. That's okay. You don't have to travel. Area, but I heard about Raymond, Mississippi. Raymond knows everything about. I don't. Um, yeah, you know, go there. Um, butterfly word. Hi, thank you for joining. Um, hi, Kiafa. Traveling is awesome. I traveled as an SPD tech, but I'm studying for my CST. And need the experience. Yeah, congratulations on um on traveling as an SPD tech. I met several SPD techs while I was traveling. They're all cool and great people. You know, when you're traveling, you actually become like a, your home, a, a, your own community. I'm getting tongue tied. It becomes a community. So you start like vibing with other people, whether it's a traveling surgical tech, a traveling nurse, a traveling SPD tech. Like once you become a traveler and other travelers are there, they know that you're there and you guys kind of like, I hang out with other travelers. And when and two, when you're traveling, you end up running into people at in different cities. Like right now, I got a homegirl that's from Atlanta that's in Dallas trying to get me to come to Dallas. And I'm like, girl, I'm in Jacksonville. You know, I'm not going to Dallas right now. What does a regular scrub tech do? You do all of the services area. You do, like I did several services before I picked one that I really like. And even when you do pick them, you still end up, a good surgical tech. Now, in my opinion, a good surgical tech can do more than one service. That's my opinion. Now, some surgical techs that only do one thing may feel different about that. I chose to do plastics in general. I like GYN. I'll do urology. I'll do podiatry. I'll do ortho. I love ortho. I love ortho. I love ortho. Ortho is amazing. Because that's like you get to physically see a bone and put a bone back together. Like, that's the coolest shit ever. I like ortho. But yeah, I still like, so it, for those that are traveling and that are considering traveling, you will have enough money to do a lot of stuff with. So if you're in debt, and I say a lot, like the pay has increased thanks to this whole like situation that's going on. The pay has increased. So when I say the pay has increased, it increased enough for me to like look at it like, girl, is we not going traveling or what? We're not going traveling yet, you guys. But we might go. We might go next year. I don't know yet, but... We'll see how it play out. If I can, if I can um, recruit myself, if I can place myself, then I might take an assignment just to keep my experience current. Because if y'all don't know, when you out the game for a little while, you kind of it kind of mess you up. So, but the thing is, what I need y'all to understand, and what they're not gonna teach you at the hospitals unless you just meet somebody that know about it, is to be financially literate. Like understand what a budget is, understand where your money is going, and understand why your money is going there put things into play that you know that it's going to benefit you so one of the things that i would say <clears throat> like i was saying earlier is to do 50 percent of your pay use that for your exp monthly expenses i was thinking about doing plastic surgery anyways yeah no i like plastic surgery um i like plastic surgery too but i love ortho i mean i like both of them a lot but ortho is the win l and d is the win too but you only do one surgery in, in, in l and d for the most part but if you get a budget, you guys, I want to, I want to focus. I didn't skip your question. I got to the area. Um, so yeah. So get into the budget. If you have a, if you don't have a budget, you guys, you're just going to be working. So knowing how much money it costs for you to live every month, that's the beginning. Go for it, Mississippi. Oh, that's what's up. Um, knowing how much money it costs for you to live, how much your rent is. Can you lower your rent? Can you house hack? Y'all know what house hacking is, where you can either rent a room out 
or whatever you need to do. Can you do that? Can you ha hack your car? Like cut your monthly expenses down as much as you can. Can you grow a garden? That's part that's part of a house hack, you guys. That's part of a monthly budget. Like maybe you don't want to grow your own vegetables. Okay, that's fine. But at least cook your own food, at least most of your food instead of eating out all the time. Because it's gonna benefit you in the long run as far as your money go. If you go eat beans and rice for like three or four days out the week, you know, maybe not every week, but sometimes you know, to cut the cost, that's gonna like your money gonna go further on them beans and rice than it would if we eating at Chipotle door dashing. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So you can, your money, you'll be done blew your money before you know it. So I cut back a lot of my monthly expenses. I do rent where I live at, you guys. And I rent here for a reason. It's easier for me to rent this, this space and to do the things that I do from here because I have more than one business out, out of the house. So now I have multiple businesses out of this house. That becomes a tax write-off. Now, the next phase is to buy my own. It's, but I like I'm looking at land more than I'm looking at houses, you guys. So that's another investment form for me, though. How I'm looking at it. How did you how do you recruit yourself? There are multiple ways you can either become your own staffing agency or you can. There are different um, companies. It's a company that I'm thinking of specifically, particularly that I signed up with that um, is basically like I turned into my a recruiter. But I'm not getting the full, um, it, I had to pay, or not pay, but it's a commission. Like, if I was to get the contract myself with the hospital, I would get more. But because this company gets the, um, they get the bid or whatever, they just pretty much have, like, virtual recruiters. And you can just, it's a whole group of people. Like, I can recruit nurses and everything right now. So you're saying I can go and be a good plastic surgeon and ortho. Yeah, you can do both of them. I would start with just being a regular surgical tech and getting the basics down first area. You just first, when you get to the place that you're going to work at, they're going to pick what um, service they need you to be in. And then you just going to be in that service or they may train you in multiple services. And then whichever one you are good at, that's where you will end up being at. <laughs> and so it'll end up picking you. But yeah, to answer your question, Maria, you can... um. I'm going to have to go look and see, and I'll talk about it in another video, I guess, as far as how to recruit yourself, but they changed the, like, company and some more. They did some changes, and so, yeah, I um I didn't know who I was looking at as far as my email went uh, until a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, they changed the name, and so that's when I kind of started looking back at it, but you can become a recruiter. Or you can get contracts with these comp these hospitals and the, the doctor's offices yourself. You don't have to go through a recruiter. But that's the whole business side of it. And if you have, like, employees and stuff like that, it, it comes with um, having employee, um, what is it, work miss comp and all of that other stuff. So instead of me starting my own recruiting agency, I just decided to partner with somebody else. And so that's what I'm referring to. But I'll get into that in another video. I'm just trying to make sure... They got their stuff together before I really talk about it or even take a, an assignment. Because if I did take an assignment, I would place myself at this point. But there are some recruiters. And the whole point of having multiple, um, having multiple, to being signed up with multiple agencies is because you may, you don't know who's going to get the assignment or who's going to get the bid or the contract. So you want to have your profile with more than one agency. You have a lot of great info. Thank you, Butterfly Word. I'm with you on getting the land. Yeah, we getting land in 2021. And if y'all ain't stack y'all money, at least get your credit score up so you can, you know, leverage credit. I'm not all for credit if you can't pay it and you don't have no plan to pay it off. If you don't have no plan to pay your credit back, then don't get into no credit debt. So, so I'm not a fan of credit at all. But if you are working and you're are and you gonna plan on working for the next couple of Priest is it Rafael, uh, Ray Fella. Oh my God, I'm terrible. Hi, Priestess. Yes, hey girl. I'm sorry, I just totally butchered your last name. I'm so sorry. Um, Y'all already know I be struggling with the names. I ain't gonna even lie. My name is Kiafa and I had the nerve to be like struggling with people's names. Um, But yeah, so the land is what's on the, the menu for 2021. I'm not really interested in like a house. I'll put a trailer on that bitch, you know, and not really give a shit. But I would turn it into a homestead like that's it would make money it wouldn't just be like you know oh i got 20 acres like we got 20 acres and a whole bunch of cattle and some other stuff going on on it that's where my brain be at but 
back to the whole like credit part of it. Get your credit right if you out here and you got if you're making enough money. And even if you're not making money, like guys, your credit is not hard. It's not a hard thing to fix. Work on your credit. Um, if you're gonna be in America, it's part of the game. Oh, butterfly word. Um, yes, that's the first thing. Getting the credit. Yes, butterfly word. What just um you heard Mary, do you think? Yeah, um, plastic surgery and neuro, both of them are good. Okay, okay, Ariel, we'll be here. Um, so yeah, go ahead and get your credit. It's not gonna cost you much. Um, if you have bad credit, I've I've had a bankruptcy, guys. Like I'm here, I'm gonna share my story. I did my own bankruptcy. It's ten, it was over 10 years ago, so it no longer shows up on my credit report. But even after doing a bankruptcy, I still didn't have the right habits to not fall back into the same situation. So I caught myself before I got out of control as far as building up too much debt. And I paid off everything, but without having to, the second time I paid everything off without having to file for bankruptcy again. And then um, I did it all myself, you guys. I put my credit report from Experian and I got the, it's a couple of letters that you, I did a verification letter, a validation letter, not a verification. I did a validation letter to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax on everything that was on my credit report. And I and I asked them to basically validate these um these credit inquiries or whatever that was on there. And if the company didn't respond, and then they had to remove it. And so that's what they did. And so after that, it was only like one or two things left. And so I just paid that off. And then I went and got um, two secured credit cards. I got one through Capital One and I, it was secured. So I put like, I think $800, they gave me a thousand dollar credit limit or whatever. And I just started putting my cell phone bill and some other stuff on that. That was going to actually come off every month. And I would just pay the balance off before it reported to the credit bureau. So you have to know if you're going to use credit cards, you have to know when you when their um, report date is. Because if it's at this balance of zero on the report date, then that's good and you can use it after the report date. And that's what I was just playing the game. And so I got my credit and then I got another card from Discover It a couple of a couple of months after I got the Capital One card. So I had the Capital One card, I think almost maybe six months to a year. And then I got the Discover It card and that was it. And so most of you guys may not know this, but my car was already paid off. And then this year, y'all might know this or not, but I got in a car accident. So I currently don't have a car and I chose to not get a car because I, I wanted to put the money into the stock market. And so that's what I did. I just found more value in having the money in the stock market than I found in actually having um, a car. And I, and I could get a car, you guys. Like I have the credit score to get a car. I have the funds to get the car, but it just didn't make sense financially when I'm trying to build out other businesses and I would rather spend four or $500 on my ad revenue than I would on a car note. So I had to make a decision. I did choose to do this versus having the comfort of a car, but my mom lives here and Uber is here. And so, and I live in a fairly like urban or whatever, like everything is close to me so I can kind of walk and it's, and it's fine. So that's what I decided to do, but it's all because I know what numbers I'm at as far as my monthly um, expenses. And I know that if I can live off as little as possible, um, I can live the lifestyle that I want. And so the lifestyle that I choose to desire is that of me waking up when I choose to not having to be scrubbed in at 630. Like I don't choose that lifestyle anymore. And it was a good lifestyle for me, but I, it, it all required me to start looking at my finances and to take in more responsibility for my situation instead of like blaming or being, you know, accepting this victim mentality. Like I'm not a victim of circumstances. Things are what they are and I'm just dealt this hand. So I have to deal with it. And so, you know, I just went out and I did what I could with what I had and I'm doing that now. And so I want to show you guys too, like happiness don't always mean money. And that's what I'm kind of trying to get at too. Like I'm more happier it now than I have been in a long time. But to to some people, they may think, oh, I would rather have this kind of lifestyle. So if you want to have a lifestyle of li having a Tesla and, you know, you in a penthouse, you can do that as a surgical tech. Like you can make that kind of money. You can live a very good lifestyle as a surgical tech, especially if you don't have a whole bunch of kids. Like I got one child and me and his dad actually co-parent. So it's not like, 
I'm in this situation of, oh, I'm a single parent with a child. Like, yeah, I'm a single mom, but I'm out here, like, enjoying life as a single mom or a mom with a kid. Like, how, like yeah, I'm single with a kid, but it's not a sentence or anything like that. I choose to live a very modest lifestyle in order to invest heavily. Like, I'm heavily invested. And that's because I waited until I was in my 30s to start investing. Had I started investing when I was in my 20s, I wouldn't have to be this aggressive with my um, investment strategy. And so I'm here to share my story with you guys so you don't go through the same thing that I did. So it doesn't take you 15 years to get out of the game. It'll take you five to 10 years, you know, if you are at a place where you can actually hear what I'm saying. Some people, you know, it might go in and one day and not the other one. And so the whole thing for me making this video tonight was to share with you guys that Yes, becoming a surgical tag is cool, but it's not going to matter if you're a surgical tag or if you're a McDonald's employee or if you work at Walmart or wherever you work at, if your money management habits aren't there. Like if you are here making bad money decisions, you're going to make bad money decisions with more money. That is just going to be a bigger, you're going to have a bigger, um, it's going to be a bigger loss and it's going to be more um, apparent. TF, hi, it's me, Kevin. Kevin, hi, Kevin, from West uh, from West Palm Beach. Yes, let me ask you a question. Can you consistently do travel and make definitely in Florida? Mm, probably for sure in Florida. Fifty thousand? What's fit? Yeah, you can make that in Florida. What's fifty thousand a month? I don't know what fifty thousand a month is, but you can make it easily. Probably working six months out of the year. Like you ain't even got to work a full um year to make 50 like 50,000 is not that much how much is 50,000 so 10 i'm gonna say even if you were 10, even if you worked um 7 months out of the year you can make 50,000 for sure in florida and florida is one of the lower states i would maybe expand it though you can make it faster if you leave florida so if you was if you was open to making it faster, I would say not so much. Yeah, it would be faster. So if you need faster money, I would leave Florida. If you okay with the pace, then you can stay in Florida. It just depends on where you, you know where you at in life. You need fast money. I ain't really need fast money at one point. I just needed consistent money, and then I was like, oh, I can make um, this consistently as a surgical tech at six months if i only wanted to work six months out of here like keep in mind my thought process was to only work half the year like i didn't want to work all year that that's not that wasn't living to me to have to work 40 hours a week every week every like no i wanted to be able to take my son to school i wanted to be able to like make pancakes and bacon I wanted to go to his field trips when he was in school. And now that he's homeschooled, I want to be able to be there to homeschool him when he needs help, to go on vacation where we want to. Like, I find joy in that. So I was willing to take a step back from being in the OR um, six months out of the year and live off of less. So I had to first learn how to live off of making money for the first half of the year and then the second half of the year you know, only maybe working one or two days, out, you know, out of that. And so once I figured that out, then it was like, okay, now I need to put the money into investment opportunities. And so I chose, I chose to do entrepreneurship because it was already in me. It was already something I was doing. I just didn't have the guts to like go in full time until later, until I had like, I was financially comfortable. I couldn't make certain decisions when I wasn't in a good place financially, if that makes sense. I was making like poor people decisions, decisions that you make when you're broke. And so you make different, different decisions when you have your lights, you know, your light bill paid and you have your money paid, your um, rent and all that stuff paid. You make different type of decisions. So once I got that under control, then I started investing and I went all in. And I was just like, I'm never working for anybody else again because if I work for somebody else, that means I'm not working for myself. And so I'm worth more than working for other people. Even if I did take a contract, like I say, I wouldn't take one unless I was getting paid for it, like as a recruiter. And so that's that's what that is. But yeah. 
So that was interesting. I mean, if y'all, if you want to be like, being a surgical tech is not a bad thing at all. I just want people to really take into mind that they need to make a lifestyle change before the money comes. Like the money, the money will come. If you're going to school and you're working on being like a surgical tech or whatever, the money will come. How was my, oh, the first assist process. So I did it, uh, this pathway is closed now, but I did it basically, they accepted me because of my um, military training, I think it was. I did the military pathway, they closed it. Now you have to go back to school for it. And so I, um, I had to do 200 more first assist cases. So I did that. And then I had to pass the surgical first assist exam. And so <laughs> I've taken that a couple times now. And so we're going to take it a couple more times until I, well, I'm, I hope I only had to take it one more time to pass it. And so, yeah, I took, I'm taking off, uh, I think I'll start studying back for it in January. I took off December because I was basically able to just relax for the end of the year. My son is at his dad's house. So I took like a break <laughs> of doing everything. So I'll, I'll hop back into that into January. And maybe you guys, if you're still in school and stuff like that, um, we'll be able to do like a study session because part of my stuff has to do with um, surgical, for, surgical tech. A lot of money high for the schooling. Actually from, so there's a school here in Florida at First Coast, um, Gulf Coast State College, and it's a community. It's a community college, so I don't think it costs that much. I don't think it's probably more than five thousand dollars, honestly. Um, and so that's there. If you, I don't know what your financial situation is, but you may be able to afford that one. And then there's a self-pay one. Um, I think is is the Ace of Meridian. I think it's Meridian. I can't remember, but I think it's Meridian. And I think they also offer a. Um, is they're not. Um, you can't do like a federal funding with them, but I think they have it to where you can borrow money from like a private lender or something like that. And, um, go to their school and pay the private lender back. I think they have that on their page. Hey, sunshine. Hey, love the info you're putting out. What do you think is good for the first, a first travel assignment? I don't, it depends on your money situation. But I'm not making no type, I would make no type of move under for anything under two, two probably at this point, like $22,000 $22, a week. I think that's probably fair. I think honestly more than that is fair right now. I've been seeing pay for like 3000 So, <laughs> I mean, it depends on too where you're going. Because up north right now, they're paying more money. And Florida, they're not going to pay. It. So it depends on where you're going. But I've been seeing numbers all over the place lately. Like, all over the place. So for me personally, to do anything, it wouldn't be for anything less than probably like 2200 Bring home. So that might be like twenty five. Yes, I can travel as a first assistant. And I probably would, honestly. Um... Think about taking, so maybe next year I'll think about taking a contract just to keep my experience, but I don't know that I'm going to do that, depending on how my entrepreneur life is going, because I'm way more focused on that. If I could maybe go as a first assistant and um, place myself on the travel assignment or get assignment myself, then I might do it, but I don't see myself like building out anybody else, like working for nobody else. And because I know how to make money so many different ways now, like the type of money that I would make as a first assistant is cool. But if I can make the same amount of money at home, you know, on my own terms, then I'll probably end up doing that. And so that's what I would encourage most people to do, honestly, at this point. If 2020 hasn't taught us anything, it's definitely taught us that having multiple strands of income is the way to go. And so I would definitely look into... um. Oh yeah, you're gonna have attitude, sunshine. It's gonna be that. It's gonna be that because you're a traveler, you're making more money than them. And two, like sometimes we end up getting more um they they make you work harder. But you can either report it and let them know like you feel some type of way, or you can just do your time and get out. Like it's just up to how you feel about it. If it's blatant disrespect and stuff like that, then I would handle it and let my recruiter know. The first person that I would tell is my recruiter. And I will let them know that I'm unhappy because the recruiter's job is to make sure that you stay happy. And if they, if, if you have to leave, then you just have to leave. Like I'm not a, I'm not above like leaving, and I'm not above telling anybody else to leave a contract if they're not being treated 
you know, with the respect that you deserve, that you deserve. Cause it's not fair for you to have to deal with people with their bad attitudes and you shouldn't have to, but I would tell them like either. And I would report them if you had to, like, I wouldn't be above, like, I'm, I'm going to tell, like, I'm telling, <laughs> I'm telling on you. Like if you don't, and at this point too, like what I, I would have to tell you is that you don't belong there, so to speak. So you're not a part of their crew. You're not a part of their clique, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So don't try to be. Like, if they want to be cool with you, then yeah, but you making more money than them. And they know it. <laughs> so is that. That's what you're dealing with. It's more envy that you're dealing with and jealousy than what you, you probably don't even realize it. Everybody's not going to be like that, though. Because I'm telling you, one of the last places I went, I had a, gr a good group of people. They didn't treat me like I was an outsider. Um... They really did, and they really embraced me. It to, and it was, it was crazy. I I don't think I've been like embraced and accepted the way that I was accepted when I was in, in my last California job, or one of my last California jobs in anywhere. And I just I appreciated them for that. But two, it's normally when like if people being mean to you and nasty to you, it's because they either jealous of you, or they envious of you, or something like that. And as if as a traveler, is you making more money than them. And so it just come with the territory. Smile at them. You know, have a great day. I hope you're doing well today. Come in there with a bubbly ass attitude. Like I'm her. I'm the one. I'm happy. I'm happy even when I'm not happy. Like people can't stand happy, cheerful ass people. Like they don't like that. That's going to be more offensive to them than you coming in there being grumpy. I promise you. Just go in there. You're going to have to stay like. I don't want to say prayed up because that's not it. I guess like you're going to have to be on your pot, like make sure your positivity is at its most high when you're dealing with some of these, you know, people and their attitudes. Just make sure you are at the best place you can be at because if don't come, don't give them that attitude back because then you sending that out there to the universe. And I don't know if y'all know this about me, but like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm that type of person. Don't send that type of energy out there if you don't want it back. So it's going to be hard because it's going to be times where people are going to be treating you, you know, like you don't want them to. And so because you're in a professional environment, the first person that I would like, you could tell the person like, okay, well, I don't appreciate how you talking to me. You could say that if you want to, like in the OR, you already know you kind of do have to stand firm sometimes, but it might bite you in the ass too. So you got to be careful with that. So I would just be like to, or you could talk to him and be like, what the, what your problem is? But you know, people <laughs> might think you being aggressive. So be careful with that. But I would just be happy as much as you can. And like, you're going to have to be real happy, like the real life happy, not the fake kind of happy. Like you're going to have to really be happy because when you're really happy, like, you going to, when other people like miss, but you just like, well, I'm sorry you feeling like that. And you just keep going. Like, sometimes I just don't really be, I'm kind of like not aware of how like miserable people are. Cause I'm so like happy with my life and I'll be trying to show pe other people how to be happy with their life. Yeah. Just be happy. Like be real life happy, be happy, learn how to be happy outside of work. Cause then they kind of translate at work. And sometimes your happiness I mean, it's going to take work. I ain't going to lie. Because happiness for me takes work. I have to be mindful of who I allow in my space and who I talk to on the phone and what type of TV I'm watching, like what type of entertainment I'm watching. I have to be mindful of that because I know all of that plays into my programming, into my psyche. So it's certain type of music that I listen to. It's certain type of TV that I watch, you know, or shows that I watch and I, it's certain type of people that I'm around. And really, these days, I'm very much like, no, you keep your miserable ass over there. I'm good over here. Like, I'm I'm like with social distancing, with negative energy, like, give me six feet because your negative ass energy is contagious. Like, stay over there. And so, but you can tell that from people too. Like, you can read people and tell like they, you. And it might be like your husband. It could be your mama. It could be anybody. I don't care if it's your husband. Start saging the shit out of your house. Get you some Palo Santo wood. I don't know, go get you some water, some holy water and start sprinkling, whatever you believe in. Start clearing that energy because if you happy outside, you're going to be happy inside. And when you start being happy and you're going into work, and most people at work are really there, they're like living paycheck to paycheck. We know this, if you, watch, if you read any of the statistics, people are living paycheck to paycheck. And most Americans, 
don't make over it's a sixty thousand dollar household you guys with two people in the household so the average household is a sixty thousand dollar a year household with the average household being a two-person household so just think about that for a second so the average household is making sixty thousand dollars with two people in it so now here you come as this surgical tag this traveling surgical tag making sixty thousand dollars in four months you know three four months or something like that depending on what they got going on and if you're taking strikes and all of that stuff like i would do strikes we was making like 13 1400 a day sometimes now I, the average was like a thousand dollars a day on a strike but sometimes there would be more than that and so imagine that like you making this kind of money and then you come into somewhere and they making like 25 dollars an hour 30 dollars an hour and here you come like you eating good you living good you know so you have to be like real careful because you step into like that big girl role when you traveling or that big guy role. Like even if you ain't making a whole bunch of money, if you don't feel like it, they thinking you making more money. So they're going to treat you like this. But yeah, that's what I had to say about that one. I feel like on the whole tangent, but it's, it's true. It's true though. But yeah. So when you making money though, you guys, like why you out here making these big dollars? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> while you making money though at least be in the mindset of making sure you're doing right with the money get you um get you some type of stocks put you some money like i say in the etf use robin hood it's the easiest app out to use and go ahead and start investing some money into yourself into like that you're welcome sunshine <laughs> i know i like went all the way off but it's really like outside. It's more. It's more of a person thing. That it's like a more of a. It's it's a bigger picture at play sometimes with the attitudes and so, that's what that is. But I want you guys to make sure you make it. You making the right moves with your money. So when you dealing with people with nasty attitudes, if you choose to continue working there, it's a choice. It's not because you have to, right? And that was one thing I didn't realize this until my mom told me this one day. One day, so I had like a whole bunch of PRN jobs. Like I had like four or five PRN jobs here in Jacksonville, and I started making more money. Right, I would go to one, I would be making like twenty. I think I started at one place. I was making like twenty dollars an hour. Then I was making like twenty one dollars, and then I went from like twenty one to like twenty four, twenty six dollars an hour. Right, and so I, I had all these different places that I was making these different incomes at. And so I started having like a different mindset and I was just like, oh, I'm not picking up any shifts there because for one, they be acting funny when I'm up in there. And for two, I'm only making $20 when over here, if I go over here, I'm gonna make 26 or $27 an hour, right? So I started handling them a completely different. I wasn't available anymore. My time was more valuable over here at this other place than it was for me at this other place that I, you know, even though I had started off there, I was just like, well, shoot, if y'all not gonna make me pay me no more money, I'm gonna go where the money at. And so that's what I did. I have no loyalty to these companies when it comes down to my money because they have no loyalty to you when it comes down to paying. If they really did, when you were up for your next employee uh, raise, your employee raise or whatever, they would give you the amount of years experience that you were worth. So what I mean by that is if you stayed somewhere for two years, right? When you go get your next raise, your raise should come up to what you would be making if you was a tech for two years. But it doesn't work like that, does it, guys? So if you work there and you get a raise, your first or second year is going to be like a quarter. It might be like 15 cents or something like that, right? That's how it go. So even if you just left and went down the street or run around the corner to another facility, you would make more money. Now, I can say that here in Jacksonville because we have a whole bunch of hospitals in this area and surgery centers and things like that. And so you get the, it's competition for the hospitals, but they're still not giving you as a raise what you are technically worth on paper, what the experience level that you're worth. So don't be having loyalty to these places. Get out here, get, get your experience. Make sure they put you in multiple services, you guys, because I'm, I'm always say that. Don't get stuck in one service. You're more than a one trick pony. And then go, um, pre say, yep, yep. Go out here, get your experience, and then go traveling. Have your profile with multiple agencies. Don't be sitting around here so loyal to one particular agency because you like the recruiter. She like you too. He like you too because when you start working, they getting paid too. So make sure you understand the rules of the game. Like, 
it ain't it ain't loyalty and business. It's business and business. Now, if you doing doing business with your friend, that's different. But you don't know these people from Adam House Cat. You just out here to get money from them. I'm not saying to be nasty to your home girl that's down the street that want to go into business with you. That's not what I'm saying. If it's somebody that you don't know and like you don't know these hospital administrators or these directors and these nurse managers, you don't know them. So you don't owe them anything, but you to be a halfway decent employee and you don't owe them that you owe that to yourself. Because if you're a good employee, that's energy that you're bringing to yourself. So go in here, be a good employee. So you can get that same energy back. You know, you don't want to put out deceptive energy or anything like that. So you go do a good job and then you go on to the next and until you hit whatever goal you're trying to hit, but you need to have a goal. You need to have a plan and, and that's going to be your downfall if you don't have a plan and you just out here working. Take the time out. Look at your budget. Your budget should include your monthly expenses, your rent, your car note, your electricity, your phone bill, how much it's going to cost for you to eat, your kids, um, daycare, all of that stuff is included. Then what you look at is you try to cut, where can I cut costs at? Can I go down on a cheaper apartment or can I turn or a house or something? If I can't, can I start house hacking? What can I do to, you know, lower these bills? Can we sleep with no heat on or no air conditioner on? Or do we just need to pile on more clothes? Like start getting creative. It sounds like what people would call cheap, but you have a bigger goal in mind. Your goal is whatever your, you know, Maybe you want to buy a house, you know, maybe you want to pay off your debt. Maybe you want to send your kids to college or whatever the case is. You want to have money for yourself when you get old so you don't have to go to a nursing home. You can just have, you know, somebody else come to your house and take care of you. I don't want to go to a nursing home. I want to live in my home and then have somebody come to my property and take care of me at my property. That And I'm going to have enough money to do that. Even if Braylon don't want to take care of me, he ain't got to. I'm going to have enough money to take care of myself. Because it's not his responsibility to take care of me when I get old. It's my responsibility to make sure that there's enough money available to me when I'm older. So that, you know, I can live the life that I want to live for my old. Like, right now, I'm preparing for the future Kiafa. The, you know, like, we got to make sure she good. And so, in order to do that, I may not be able to... You know, I might not want to go out and spend $300,000, $400,000 on a house in a really nice neighborhood that has an HOA. I might not, that might not be what I should do. Maybe I should take a hundred to $200,000 and go buy 20 acres of land and then flip that into some shit. Like maybe that's what she does. You know what I'm saying? It might not be as pretty as you guys want it, but the whole thing is surgical tech is not the whole solution. The solution is being more um, being more mindful of your money and being more self aware, like and, and being more goal oriented too. Like actually have a have a plan of like what you gonna do. Why do you have the? Why are you working? You are you working to take care of your kids? Are you working to you know provide a better house? Like what are you working for? What are you working on? Why are you working so hard? Like why do you have a job that you don't like? Think about that kind of stuff. And then start putting things into place that can replace those things. Maybe you don't eat out as much because you want to purchase, you know, a couple of acres and you realize that you spend $400, $500 a month and really it only costs you about $4,000 to buy like two or three acres. Like if you, if you really like went out and bought some land somewhere that you didn't want it, you know what I'm saying? Like think about why you doing stuff and then relate it to what you're doing. So if I did this, like I was looking at my car, if I went and got the car that I want, then I'm not going to be able to spend as much money on, um, these different ads that I want to run and practice on running. Well, why do you want to run the ads, Kiafa? Well, I want to run the ads because it's going to help expose my business even more, which is going to increase my cash flow. So if I want more cash flow, I might not be able to go out and buy no car because I want a Jeep. You know, I might want a, a Hummer or some because that's what I want. <laughs> like, those are the type of cars that I like. So if I want a Hummer, we're looking at almost a $100,000 car. Like, why would I go buy that when I'm trying? I don't even have the land yet. Now, if I'm sitting on a couple acres of land and I got a couple hundred thousand in the bank, maybe then I could go out and get this Hummer. But I can't get it right now because we don't have a couple hundred thousand in the bank for for the hummer you know what i'm saying so it's just being being aware of that and knowing why i'm doing certain things and two i have a kid like are we setting examples out here what are we doing 
Are we just like, you know, not setting examples for the kids? When I talk to my son, I don't talk to him about going to get a good job. I talk to him about building businesses. Like, what do you want to do? What do you enjoy doing? Are you a gamer? Are you want a game? All right, well, let's let's build you out a whole gaming setup then, if that's what you want to do. But to be that kind of parent, it took me to be able to, like, step away from, you know, working and to be able to give both of us that space to create or to allow ourselves to you know, evolve into what it is we trying to evolve into. But when I was a parent and I was working, for, or not a parent, but when I was an employee and I was working full time, I would have to go, we got to go to bed. You need to go to bed right now. We got to hurry up and get up. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to take you to your grandma house so she can take you to school. Oh man, I forgot your belt that, you know, you have to wear this specific belt because you go to a private school and they require a certain kind of belt. Like that was my life. Like, you know, hurrying up and rushing from one side of the town to the other side because I got to pick him up from um, from after school care. You know, like that was my life and I was just over it. And so I made a choice and I made certain sacrifices in order to live the type of lifestyle that I want to live. And I want to show you guys to do the same, show you how to do the same thing. So if you want to do it through surgical tech, I'm going to show you how to be, how, or traveling, whether it's a surgical tech or SPD tech. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not saying it because it sounds good, because it's not fun to sometimes be, you know, to choose to stay home and work on a website when all your friends are hanging out and they texting you and they live, you know, they live on Instagram and you sitting at home, you know, looking like this on YouTube on a Saturday trying to, you know, share your message. Like, it's not pretty, but it is what it is because I know that it'll benefit you guys. I know it was nobody there to teach me or to tell me like, hey, do it like this, or at least do it somewhat like this, a little bit like this. You can, like, I just want to give you the, the information and what you do with it is different. Like, don't do exactly what I do with it because I might have a different take on it. Uh oh, sorry guys, I got people coming in. Um, I might do something different and you, like our experiences give us different knowledge, right? So because I experienced something my way, I'm gonna have my twist and my turn on it. But you had different life experiences. So by just me sharing my information with you or my story with you, it might trigger some other thing like, oh, she did it like this. But what if I can do it like this? Because you have a different experience and a different context over the story than what I would have. And then you turn into a whole like millionaire or something like that or whatever. Like that's if I can change your life by helping you, then that's what I'm like here for. It took me a while though to understand like what to do. And so now all I know what to do is just to share you got with you guys what I have been through. And so it's not bad. It's not good either. Like it just is what it is. And so, but I do know that the older that I get, the more I appreciate things in life and just to have the opportunity. Like I'm 37. So there was a time where I grew up where there was no YouTube. There was no computers in the house. Like right now it's like three computers in my house. Well, two, cause Berlin, Berlin has his, but I grew up when there wasn't this much internet access to like the average person. Can you just imagine that where you had to go to the library to use the computer for only 30 minutes and then like maybe the dial up was slow so you really only got like 10 minutes on the computer and then going from knowing what that's like to being in a world where like I can turn my phone on and go live and like millions of people could possibly watch it. I'm not saying we'll watch it could possibly watch it you are like millions of people have access to the to the information <coughs> excuse me guys oh that tea though it says sit sit and sip a while yeah but um so yeah i'm just sharing with you guys and and hopes that it helps you figure out what you need to figure out in your life and realize like regular people can do this shit too. Like it ain't got to be just the big gurus and all of that stuff that's out here. The regular people like you and me that might not have came for money, you know, have the same accessible, like accessible accessibility or whatever. Like, no, that's not the word, but I can, I can deliver a message to the same amount of people that, you know, the famous people can. Now, I might not have the same audience because I'm not, you know, an actor or anything like that. But, I mean, do you want to see an actor blow up or would you rather see, like, a regular person explain to you 
how to go from like your job to actually creating the lifestyle that you want to live. Do you want to be out here, you know, working for the rest of your life? Or do you want to learn how to do the stuff that you enjoy doing and do that and make a living? Like, that's more fun to me. So, I mean, that's why I'm not really telling people to go to surgical test school. I would tell you to pick something that you like. Pick something that you like to do and do that for 16 months or 24 months or however long surgical test school is. Like, do something, but now I'm not saying just do it. I mean, like, have a plan. Okay, every day I'm going to go on YouTube or I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to talk about this. Or every day I'm going to podcast or record this. Like, right, pick something and stick to it and watch you share your message with somebody and it helps them. I think it's not fair for us to have um, knowledge and not share with each other the knowledge. It's a collective situation so maybe we don't do things the same way that might not be true maybe we don't do the same thing but at least if you give me the information i can take it and do what i know what to do with it or it, it might you know translate differently to me so that's what i have you guys i just wanted to share that with you guys because i know i have a lot of people on here i'm like right in the camera face right but I know it's a lot of people on here that want to go to surgical tech school or go to be surgical techs or they think about being surgical techs and all of that stuff. And it's a cool career. I'm not going to lie. Like, it is cool. It's fun. It's exciting. It may, depending on your service, you may get a rush from it. You know, like, it's really cool. But you will get burnt out. I'm here to tell you that if you don't have a plan, you'll be 20 years in the game and you'll have to go to work. And you're going to be mad at yourself because you have to go to work and you won't have the choice to take off of work. You won't have the opportunity to spend with your kids or your grandkids and stuff like that because you, you know, don't have enough money to stay home because you might not have, you know, created the lifestyle that you need to be able to stay home for a month or two months at a time. But in the meantime, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, I guess, and then... If, especially if you're a surgical tech and you're traveling or if you're an SPD tech and you're traveling, like definitely stacking your money is going to be the key. Putting some money up, putting your money into like an investment. That's it. Do that. Start doing that. Start thinking about if you can't do a business, then start partnering with people that are in business. Maybe start looking into different life insurance policies that will help you grow. Like an annuity is something that would be great if you don't want to go into business. Because then, you know, at, at least on the back end, if you need to borrow some money, you can pr pretty much turn it to your own bank. You can finance your own stuff with annuities. A lot of people don't know that. But you can do that if you if you really trying to, um, if you really don't want to have to, like, think about how your money is going. Like, look at, different life insurance policies would be um, something to look into. Partnering with different businesses, different business owners. And um, probably some real estate would be good. Maybe purchasing some precious metals like gold, silver, and that type of stuff. Also, maybe looking into, um, did I say the stock market? I don't know if I said the stock market, but the stock market, precious metals, some real estate, and life insurance policies. I would put on um, like my um, wealth building agenda if you're trying to build out different wealth. Different, um, how am I saying it? Different streams of wealth building is what i'm trying to say i think so yeah so i um that's really all i have for tonight i just wanted to come talk to you guys about that make sure you understand how important it is for you to start having a good budget to maybe start working on your credit to think about why you want to be a surgical tech or go to surgical tech school or why you want to go to spd school or why you want to go traveling and then start making a financial budget around you know, your monthly expenses and make making a savings, an investment strategy. Like I said, if you invest in, the easy investments would definitely be, um, like I said, life insurance, different life insurance policies. They have different meaning. They have different purposes, I should say. Um, real estate, whether it's land you're looking at or if it's um, multifamily. The only real estate that I would be looking at, and I'm not going to even lie, would be multifamily homes and land. And I'm not even looking at multifamily homes right now at all because I don't want to have to deal with, like, tenants. So I'm looking at the land aspect of it. So I would do life insurance policies, stocks, um, more like ETFs than, like, individual stocks. 
Um, and the ETFs are the SP, the S and P five hundred. So the top performing um, companies would be in that, and then business. And so I would do a business around a hobby, though. I wouldn't do a business in something you don't know about. And then, like I said, precious metals and stuff like that is something also to look into. I don't know anything about Bitcoin, so I'm not going to speak on cryptocurrency. Um, That's not really something that I'm really familiar with. I'm not really a whole lot familiar with precious metals, but I am getting more into precious metals because I think that would be something cool to have in your portfolio when you're speaking about diversifying your income and your investment strategies. You want to look at different um things. And so silver and gold and other precious metals are definitely something to look at the stock market like i say etfs um you can eat and you can do real estate i would do multifamily homes rent out one of the uh, rent out all of the homes except for one and i would live in the other one and then i would do um i would do land i would do land i would turn it into either a homestead or some type of agriculture where you are either building out um for like vegetables and stuff like that. Or you can even do animals where you have like different cattle. Um, you can have horse, not horses, but um, cows, goats, chickens, whatever. Like if you want to do that type of stuff. But I would I would do more vegetables. I would find it easier to process vegetables than I would like animals. And plus animals, it just seemed like it's... To me, it's more like time consuming. And you have to actually be there with a garden. Or like if you was like doing a... um. Yeah, like a, a not like a, a veggie garden, I guess a veggie farm, not so much with animals. Then it would be easier if you needed to go, excuse me, out of town. Then it would be with animals. When it's animals involved, you got to get somebody to watch the animals. I got enough animals here to be able to tell you. Like, I got like eight chickens, a turtle, a cat, and a dog. And to have those here is still hard for me to make certain moves. <laughs> Man, that is some good tea. I ain't had no tea in a long time. But, um, so yeah, that's what I got for you guys tonight as far as why I don't think surgical tech is the solution, why I think more people need to be thinking about their financial situation more than like the school situation or the profession situation. I think how you make it. How you make your money is important, but how you how you spend your money is way more important when the average American might make a hundred dollars and spend a hundred and twenty dollars. Right, we got some habits that need to be addressed, and I I'm speaking on it because I know about it, I see it, I lived it, I know what it's like to have bad credit. I know how much it's gonna cost you to to pay for stuff because you got bad credit. You're gonna have higher deposits. You're going to have to pay more stuff up front. Your rent might be more. Your insurance might be more. Like, it's just, you you might have to pay more and everything. I know what that's like. And I'm just here to tell you, like, it's way easier when you got more money or better credit. Not more money, but better credit. More money would be nice, too. <laughs> but money, I also find value in other things than money. I stop, like, I would want more money, obviously, because we know that money is the is currency. And so we want to flow with the currency, if y'all get it. And so that's how that goes. But at the same time, we can find value in different, I find value in other things than just money. If I Like, let's just say if I had, like, I ain't had no money, but right now I got a yard full of vegetables. I could turn all that stuff into like all of that is valuable to me. You know what I'm saying? It just brings different value to the table than just having like money. But I think that's all I got for you guys. I'm a little bit tired. I don't know if y'all can like see, but <laughs> I feel like I got bags under my eyes from the last couple of days. I haven't been sleep like I've been sleeping well, but I just been like tired. So I am gonna lay down here in a little bit. But I just wanted to come share with you guys, like I say, why I feel like surgical tape is not the solution and why you definitely should be considering, you know, your financial situation without before just like trying to figure out what kind of profession you should be in. So that's all I got for you guys. I'm going to go. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, thank you for watching the replay if you're watching the replay. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye, you guys.